Hey everyone, it's Jess. Welcome back to my garden. So today I'm going to be working on the east side of my house. This is my shade garden. This is a fairly new bed. I just created it last fall. So if you guys have not been following along, I will leave that video linked up in the cards as well as in the description box for you to check that out. Um, so you can just see the complete transformation of me digging up the grass, creating the bed, doing the edging and planting it up. Um, so so far I have nothing but perennials in this bed. I did just plant the structural pieces. So this year I will be working on adding more perennials and annuals just to add some more fluff to the bed. My theme for my shade garden is just to have all white blooms. I want nothing but just lush green foliage and white pops of color, maybe a little lime or yellow tint here and there, but just really green and white is my theme. So. I'm gonna go ahead and take you through the plants I'll be planting today, get them in the ground, and then show you what it looks like in the end. So, let's go. Okay, so up first, I did pick up two of these plants here. These are calla lilies. These are gorgeous, you guys. I love, lilies are actually my favorite flower, fun fact. Um, but this calla lily, I just love the bright white cup shape of this flower. I think it will add a nice pop of color. These do get about 18 to 36 inches tall and wide. So I actually picked up four of these, um, but I just put two over here just to kind of play around with placement to see where I want them to go. Down below that, oh you guys, it is super windy today by the way. So I hope you guys can hear me okay. I lost my mic and my front facing camera is still broken, which is why I'm not showing my face. But anywho, I hope all is well. Down below that, I've actually already hauled these in my last video, so if you guys saw that, this is a second view for you guys. These are Vista Salvia. They are perennial in my area. I am in Garden Zone 7B here in North Carolina, um, and I just love, love, love this thick bloom stalk of this salvia. Like most salvia I see is like that tall, skinny bloom stalk. I just love how big these are. So. These do come out kind of like a more chartreusey green color and then they age to this really, really bright white color. So excited about these. I do have three of them here. Just plant them in a grouping. And then beside that, these two plants I did also haul in my last video. So this is a second look for you guys. These here are two Brennera. They're called Queen of Hearts by Proven Winners. Here's a look at the tag. They do get about 16 to 18 inches tall and wide and they are hardy to zone, let's see, hardy zones three through eight. So excited about those. And then down here, this is a Fatsia japonica. It's called Spiderweb. Here is the tag for you guys if you want to pause on that to get the name. Um, so y'all, I have been wanting this plant for so long. This actually gets about three feet wide and three feet tall. So I'm so excited about this, y'all. I love the variegation that this white adds to the bed, I think it'll be gorgeous. And then lastly, you guys, I finally got my hands on this hydrangea tree. Y'all, I have been wanting this tree since last year and I could not find it anywhere. Everywhere is sold out. They only have the bush form. So this is a pinky winky hydrangea. It is a panicle hydrangea. So this one does form the cone shaped blooms. It does also bloom on new wood. Um, and I really like the stems of this variety. This one has more of a pink stem to it. Let me show you guys the tag. So here's a look at the name. And then this is what the blooms look like. So, so pretty. It is hardy zones three through eight. And this tree, the canopy of it will get about six to eight feet tall and wide. So I will keep it probably around the little maybe like two to three feet range. I just want to keep it a nice little lollipop shape. Um, and y'all, I know I said I wanted this to be all white blooms. These blooms do come out initially a white color. And then as you move into fall, it will pick up that hot pink tint to it. So I'm not quite sure if I want to put this in this bed or not. We will see, but those are the plants. Let's go ahead and get to planting. One. 
The universe has known it all along Maybe this is where our story starts Maybe it was written in the stars Written in the stars You will be forever you guys so I've got all of the plants planted that I wanted to get in the ground today the next thing that I want to work on is getting drip irrigation ran to all of the plants in this bed so that I won't have to water them by hand this summer um, now I do already have a distribution line running in this bed if you can see it back there I just have the poly black tubing running all the way down the side of the house up to my faucet up there so all I'm really going to do is just tap in to that black tube and run individual lines to each one of these plants up front in the bed. First off, it'll be helpful if we grab the supplies that we need. So let's head over to my nice organized wall here. So for starters, I am going to need a hole punch. Got that. I'm gonna need some emitters. Grab some one gallon per hour and half gallon per hour just to start off with. And I'm gonna need some Barb connectors. These are just the straight couplers. Grab some of these T's as well. These are what the T's look like. And then I need my quarter inch drip tube and some pruners to cut the drip tube. And I might grab a few landscape staples as well to hold the drip line down. I think we're all set. Okay, so to start off, I'm taking my small manual hole punch and I'm just going to make a small hole to puncture the distribution line. Next, I'm using this barbed straight cutler and I'm going to insert this into the distribution line. I'm first going to put that into my hand application tool and then use that to poke it into the distribution line. Now that that's inserted, I'm going to be attaching the hose line. So this is just quarter inch poly distribution line that I'm using. I'm going to attach that to the end of the barb coupler. So now the hose line is attached to the main distribution line. What I'm going to do next is run this line straight to the plant. I'm just using my pruners to make a snip to length. And then I'm also using my foot to dig just a small little trench to bury the line into. I have gone ahead and attached a half gallon per hour emitter to the end of the line, and I'm just using a landscape staple to tack that down into place. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to install this emitter tubing. This is quarter inch emitter tubing that has holes every 12 inches. So I'm just gonna run this, kind of snake it throughout the beds. And then for the individual plants that I feel really need their individual emitters, I'll run that to them as well. But I think this will make this a whole lot easier and faster.
you guys so drip irrigation is all installed let me just go over really quick what I did this is more for my documentation purposes so I can refer back to it but I'm sharing it with you guys as well so I just tapped into the distribution line here with the quarter inch ran it straight down this way I did put in a T coupler here so that I could run a distribution line to this hydrangea here this is a half gallon per hour emitter um, I'm going to test this out just to see how it does this area stays pretty moist so I think this will be fine if not I can always go in and switch it out for another emitter and then from here, I just ran the quarter inch um, emitters every 12 inches line all through the bed. It runs all by my hydrangeas here, snakes around my hostas, past my Hyconocloa, back around this hosta here, and then I just looped it back this way. So that runs all the way down. I'm trying not to make you guys dizzy. I'm so sorry, I'm going fast. Um, and then when I got to this point here, I ran out of line. So what I did was I tapped in with a straight coupler here, ran the distribution line, put a T coupler here, ran a half gallon per hour emitter to this plant here. Same thing, kept going, put a T coupler here, half gallon emitter to this plant, keeps going. And then it stops here with a half gallon at this plant. And yeah, you guys, so that's pretty much how it's going to run. I need to take a quick break, go in, feed my little kitties, my dog, and myself because I'm starving. And then I will come back and tap into the distribution line, run some drip emitters into my planters so that I won't have to hand water those. Um, for now, I'm not going to run individual emitters to each hydrangea just because, again, this side stays fairly moist and shady. Um, but I'll just keep an eye on it. If I need to, I can always pop in some emitters to each plant but I think this 12 inch hole line whatever you want to call it will work perfectly fine so I will be back to show you guys the complete finished product and give you a full tour all right so everything has been watered in drip is running perfectly I have mulched everything over covered all the drip lines so let me go ahead and run through the plants to give you guys a tour of what I did starting off over here on this corner I decided to put my pinky winky hydrangea into a pot here this pot used to live over on my patio um, and I just decided to put in a planter because I wanted to give it more height I wasn't in love with the idea of it in the ground just because I didn't want it to be the same height as my limelight tree over there. Um, and then below it, I just underplanted it with a few of the pansies that I had left over from planting my tree ring. Um, they should do okay just because my backyard gets full sun all day long. Um, so they should get enough sun to bloom beautifully. I'll insert a clip so you guys can see what they look like because right now they're pretty closed up. Down in front of that, I planted my Fatsia japonica spider web. So this thing, again, gets about three feet tall and wide. So I want it to fill in this entire space here. I have a hydrangea here that blooms huge white flowers. Um, it is a baby and it was on clearance last year, you guys. So that one, along with the other five that I have planted here in the hedge, eventually will grow to cover most of my back wall here. I want it to grow probably right up below my window. So I cannot wait to have just a green backdrop with huge white blooms. Cannot wait for that. It's gonna take several years, but I can't wait, you guys. Okay, so down here I have a Brother Stefan Hosta coming back, and this Hosta gets huge, you guys. This Hosta will fill in this entire circle here. I have my Arpa body tree planted into a planter here. I did run a drip line into the pot, so won't have to water that. I did pop in one of my cannas here down in front of that. I put a Brennera here as well. And then this is one of my lilies. This one is a giant lily. I cannot wait to see this bloom, you guys. The blooms are huge. Basically, if you guys can picture a gigantic version of these blooms is what I'm looking forward to. Moving right along, I planted a trio of my Vista Salvia here. These are the white blooming salvia, and these grow about two feet wide, so they probably will end up touching. I just want them to fill in this entire space. Another Brother Stefan Hosta, which again will fill in this entire circle here. It probably will end up covering my salvia just a little bit, which is fine. I don't mind my plants touching. I like jam packed full beds. Popped in a canna there and another Brennera here, which needs to perk back up. And then this is another giant lily. 
This right here is a fire and ice hosta, you guys. This is one of my favorite hostas. The Autumn Frost is my favorite, but this one is definitely the second runner up. I picked this one up for my local farmer's market last year. It was the only one they had left. So I'm hoping that over the years I can divide this one so that it'll fill in this entire space. Another Emerald Arborvitae here planted in a container. I did also run a drip line to this pot as well. If you guys can see that there. And then down here is a Praying Hands Hosta that I also picked up from my local farmer's market last year. Behind that, this is the plant that I forgot to haul for you guys because it was still in my trunk of my car. But this is actually a Solomon Seal that I picked up from my farmer's market today. Um, and y'all, I'm so excited for this plant. I love the white and green variegation on the leaves. It does also produce these sweet little bell-shaped blooms, if you guys can see that there so so cute and this thing multiplies like crazy so i hope this thing fills in this entire space back here i have left a bit of a gap because you guys if you have seen my previous video of when i created this bed i do have plans to put a cover around to disguise this so you won't even see that here down in front i have three hyconocloa grasses that will grow into a nice bushy grassy mound to spill over the edges Another praying hand hasa here, and then I do have an empty space to eventually get a hose box. They are out of stock everywhere, so still waiting to get my hose box. So excuse my hose running through the bed right now. Over here are my three clearance distilliums that I picked up last year. I think these are the copper tone, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I'm not sure why these two are so much lighter in color than this one on the end because they're all three the same they all had the same tag then again it was low so they may have mislabeled them wrong but I don't know they were clearance and they're serving their purpose so I probably will cut these back next year hopefully they'll start to bush out a little bit more and then down here I have two Francie hostas coming in hot love this hosta you guys and this one gets huge just like the butter stuff in as well so it will fill in this entire space here that one will fill in this entire space here. I might go in with some annual color, maybe some Impatience or Vinca down here just to line the front border. And then lastly down here, this is my little lungwort survivor baby. This is the lungwort that used to live in my front garden bed and it was dying in my dead zone. I potted it up, rehabbed it, planted it here and it survived the winter and is flourishing, you guys. It is so, so gorgeous. Oh, I just love those speckled leaves. So yeah, that is it you guys. I know everything looks kind of wilted and wet right now. My pavers are looking kind of weird just because they are wet as well. But I will give you guys an update tour as the season progresses, as things start to come into bloom. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this plant with me video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.